Bondo here, guys. Ready to pour the walls today. Got the 20 meter pump. There's Pat. Say hi, Pat. Thumbs up, buddy. That's what we're doing today. 44 yards we're going to put in this wall. We're all ready. Everything's up. We checked all this. We put string lines up for everything. Rock and rolling. Hey guys, Bondo here. Today we're pouring a 1,600 square foot new Dura foundation. Um, this foundation calls for like 44 yards of concrete. We're using a 20 meter pump here. And uh, that's what we're doing. It's a 6 inch ICF wall. It's 9 foot tall. And we ended up doing this one. It was real hot that day, so we ended up doing it in two lifts. Ended up pouring like half of it. We went around and then we did uh, the second pour right up to the top. We usually do them in three lifts, but it was real hot that day, so I know the concrete was setting up pretty good. So if it was a cooler day, I would have did it in three lifts, which gives the concrete a little more time to cure and stuff. If this is your first time here at my channel, my name's Ron Bond. I got a concrete company called Bondo Built Construction. We do a lot of uh, new Dura foundations, a lot of flat work, stamp creep, you name it. Um, fix up houses in the winter. So if that's something you like, think about hitting the subscribe button. And uh, if you like this video, you know, if you watch it to the end and you get some value out of it, hit the like button for me. That'll help me out. And uh, throw me a comment, too. That helps me out, too, on YouTube. Helps rank my videos a little better. I can reach more people. So anyways, guys, back to the pour in here. What I like to do when we're doing these foundations, I like to get a guy on the outside and the inside just walking around the bottom. You'll see, you'll, as, you, as this video goes on, you'll see a couple guys... There's a guy right on the inside and there's a guy on the outside just walking around. I like to have them just tapping the wall with their hand, making sure there's no voids in the wall. And then we do internal vibration with these walls and we've never had a problem with it. I know some people um, vibrate them from the outside and, uh, you know, or just, just tap the wall. They don't use internal vibration, but we like to take that pencil vibrator. I got electric pencil vibrator and we stick it right down in there and uh, you can it really works really good because it consolidates that concrete sometimes when you're pouring down in the wall you know we put a fair amount of rebar in these walls so you know I put horizontal rebar on every course and we put a lot of vertical rebar in there so as that concrete's coming down through there it, sometimes it gets hung up on the rebar so when you slide that vibrator down in there, as soon as you touch that rebar, it'll it'll consolidate that concrete and shake it right down to the bottom. So, And also when you're pouring your second or third lift, it kind of mixes the two together. So that's how we do it, guys. I would recommend it. We've done a lot of these. I've never had a problem with, uh, you know, blowing out a foundation because we were vibrating it. You know, some people are afraid of that, but... Um, I have heard people having voids in the wall though, so that's no good. So we just got the first truck emptied and it took us about maybe 20 minutes. And uh, that's Pat there, he's the driver. He's pulling the one guy up out of the way so he can wash out and then the second truck's going to come right in. You want to make sure you got enough room to get your trucks in and out. You got place figured out where you want them to wash up. Because you don't want to have a guy washing up and he's in the way from the next truck. You want to get the stuff right in there as quick as you can. So when you're setting up your job, keep that in mind. You know, and Vitaly's really good getting the trucks there on time. So that's always good. You know, there's never a big gap in, in between the trucks. If they tell you they're going to be there, they're there. So I had these trucks spaced like 15 to 20 minutes apart. So we stacked them right up. There was five trucks total to pour this wall usually they'll haul you know eight nine yards so we ended up with five trucks here but we we got it done pretty fast i thought it went pretty good we ended up kind of waiting a little bit to catch up with the vibration 
because we were pouring it so fast. We didn't want to get too far ahead of it because it was so hot. Um, the guy that was running the concrete vibrator said it was starting to, you know, not flow as good, so it would, we slowed down. You're better off leaving it in the trough, getting your vibration caught up, so that you don't, it doesn't dry out on you and start sticking in the wall and it don't flow down to the bottom. So now that second truck's pulling in there, he's actually adding his water, mixing up his um, concrete to a six slump. We like to pour a six, about a six slump in these walls so it flows good down through there. You don't want to pour it too thick, it'll get hung up on you, sticking in the wall, sticking to the rebar. You want to pour it fairly loose, but not so loose that it weakens the concrete. A six is about perfect in my opinion. So Chris is here vibrating the wall. If you watch, he, he'll go down in there fast and he comes out slow. You don't want to pull that vibrator out there too fast because you'll leave a hole where the vibrator was. And if you see here, we got a, these rebar sticking out the wall here. That's where there's going to be a, a breezeway coming off the house into a garage. So I like to stick rebar in there and then when we pour that breezeway, it'll tie it right in. So this concrete we're using today is a 3,500 pound concrete mix and it's a special mix for pouring ICF walls. It's got real small stones in it so they don't put any big stones in there. They're going to clog up as you pour it down in the wall. They're all really small pea stones so it works really good. Like I said, special mix design that we always use for these walls. So I was just laughing at my buddy Matt because I looked over the wall and he was throwing up on the other side of the wall and uh, he said the heat was getting to him but I thought it was probably the beers that he had last night because I was over there had a few beers with him but he had quite a pile of empty cans by the time I got there so uh, he was he started out on the concrete vibrator that's Matt and uh, he didn't last long on there and then you see Chris um, Chris took it over and Chris ended up finishing the, all the vibration and Matt became the outside tap the form guy so he wasn't feeling too good so if you see Matt you can bust his chops a little bit some of you local guys that know him thanks so one thing I failed to mention guys is um, before we started this pour, I walked around this whole foundation and checked all my common seams, make sure I had plating over all my common seams. I had a can of spray foam with me. I spray foamed any little imperfections, little gaps or what whatnot in the wall. You know, just good practice to do that before you start pouring and you don't, you know, find something in the middle of the pour that wasn't braced right or something like that. So just keep that in mind. Before you start, just get there a little bit early. We went around and put our string lines around the outside and checked everything really good. So that's what you want to do with these walls. You also want to have a screw gun, you know, some pieces of plywood and some screws and stuff just in case you do get a blowout or something.